Well, good morning, afternoon, everybody. I'm Mike at Filmboy24, and today we're going to take kind of an in-depth look at Digit Now's brand new offering, well, new to me anyway, it's their photo, slide, and negative to digital converter. So thanks everyone for stopping by. If you're new to my channel, I primarily do cine film. I'm more of a DIY type of guy. Uh, I shoot my own film, of course, like everyone does. Uh, I process my own film like a lot do. I scan my own film, which a few do, and then I showcase it. Usually, uh, if it comes out relatively good, I showcase it right here on my YouTube channel. I also have a little series called Found Film. It's where I take a, a reasonably old roll of film that was shot, presumably shot, many, many moons ago. I mean, we've had film that was shot 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, all the way up to film that was shot around 80 years ago uh, that was stored away or lost in a basement, an attic, or, or, or in a camera bag, or in the garage, or something for some reason was never processed, ended up in an auction or a garage sale, and then ended up in my hands. And I like to process that film, and then as long as it's not crazy and appropriate, we'll show it right here on this channel. If you want to see some of those, I've done 49 episodes of that so far, number 50 coming soon. Take a look at the playlist. It's called Found Film. Uh, we have some sound films that are really cool. We're working on a project now with some... Uh, some sound found mystery film where we're trying to figure out just who owned the film originally and try to get it back to him. Anyway, enough about that. I do appreciate everyone for being here. Today, we are going to break this thing down. We're not going to break it. We're going to break it down. Full disclosure, I was sent this product for free from Digit Now. Uh, I did a review on their 8 slash Super 8 little film scanner, their 1080p scanner. Didn't do a terrible job, so I decided, yeah, I'll take a look at this. I don't do a ton of reviews uh, where the company send me products, because typically it doesn't usually fit my channel. This one, on the other hand, is specifically for film. And that's what I like, and that's what I do. So I decided I would take a look at it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to take everything out of the box. We're going to show you what's included. I'm going to push in the camera uh, for some close-ups, and we're going to go through some of the settings, and then we'll come back, and I'll show you some of the results. So let's dig in. Again, this is Digit Now's, as you can see on the front here, photo slide and negative to digital converter, and it does just that. I have some media here we'll go through in just a second but let's take a look and i'm gonna move my coffee that's whoa settle down that's something i don't always do i like having it near me so it's near <laughs> so let's take a peek now i have had this out and i have used it um i've had this for a couple months and anytime i do a little something like this i like to really go through it before i do my full breakdown obviously because i want it to be well right I'm not under any obligation to just tell you that this thing works fantastic and you should go buy one, and that's not what I do. Uh, my agreement was that I will make a video of it, and I'm going to give you my honest opinions. And then I'll let you decide. So, we can obviously see, first and foremost, it includes a USB cable and the AC adapter part for the USB cable. This is to power it on. And this end is a USB micro B connector. So we have that. It comes with an eight gigabyte generic SD card right there, which is nice. Okay. Comes with a little cleaning brush. That's just to sort of wipe off any little dust specks that are on top of the scanner. We'll get to that in just a second. It comes with three, I believe three, I'm sorry, four photo guides. This is your four by six guide. And by guide, I mean, you'll see in a minute, but it just sits on the top of the scanner glass, or the scanner plastic. And it tells you, if you're scanning 3x5, or 4x6, or 3.5x5 photos, this is just a guide, and you set your photo in there uh, to get it in the right orientation. This guide here is for, it says name card, which is actually for business cards. And last but not least, this guide here is for 5x7s. 
So it includes a three and a half by five, a four by six, a five by seven. These are for hard copy photographs and a name card or business cards, standard size business cards. You will also receive a little microfiber cleaning cloth, which goes nice and uh, hand in hand with your little cleaning brush. And lastly, as far as the accessories go, whoop, a little cleaning, sort of a cleaning brush handle sort of thingy here. I'll show you uh, what you're supposed to do with this in just a couple of minutes. So we have our accessories out here. And I'll give you a close-up of all of these out at once. I'm going to set these in here. What we have here is your negative, your slide, and your 110 film carriers or holders. And let me show you. This is your 35 millimeter film carrier. This is your 35 millimeter slide carrier. And this is your 110 carrier uh, or 16 millimeter film carrier. Let me put this over here. We'll get into these in a little in a little more detail here in just a second. Okay, let's take out the scanner unit. Let me set this down on the ground. All right, here we have the scanner unit. Voila. I'll give you a close up of this as well, and we'll get. We're going to get a close-up of, uh, you know, the operation of it anyway. Okay, now we have a very lightweight plastic body film scanner. And the purpose of this scanner is to scan all of the different media that we just talked about. Your 35 millimeter negatives, and they could also be positives. Uh, if you're using like an ectochrome film or something that's a positive film, um, it's to scan your... 35 millimeter slides, and lastly, your 110 film. Now, if you're not familiar with what 35 millimeter is, kids, this is an old 35 millimeter picture camera. This particular example is a Pentax K1000, and it's a great little beginner camera. That is the basis for machines like this. Uh, this is another example of an old 35 millimeter point and shoot camera. 110 now, you may or may not remember these. This is an old 110 camera. Say cheese. And it used film cartridges that looked like this. This was a 110 cartridge. It, it very much resembles the 126 cartridge, which was, I believe, also about 35 millimeters in, in its width. This is uh, 16 millimeters in width, which is why you can also use this carrier for viewing a few frames of 16 millimeter movie film. Okay, so how does it work? Well, pretty simple, actually. Like I say, I did use this for uh, a, quite a few days just to sort of get a gist and, and understanding of what it actually does. It has a slider on the front here, front top. It says film and it says photo. Not 100% sure if maybe that might be a little confusing because of, you know, film and photo. But anyway, photo simply means a hard copy photo like you'd see in your grandma's photo album. Film, or in your photo album if you're smart, film simply means a negative or positive but uh, non-opaque sort of negative. What we would call a negative, I guess, or a slide. This is a 35 millimeter film negative, and we're going to go over that in just a second here. And these are what you would use the photo side for, regular pictures. And we'll go through that in just a second as well. These are slides. You remember these? That's slides. And we're going to go over all this here in a close up in just a minute. The scanner itself has a plastic glass, plastic glass, that makes no sense. What, what is glass in most flatbed scanners right here on top is plastic in this one, but I do love 
that from the edges here, you can actually lift this out. And it has a little black border on it, which is also nice, so that when you're holding it, it that's not going to, any fingerprints or anything you get, you might get from holding it on the edge, isn't going to encroach into your clear area. So you can take that, that plastic piece out, the clear plastic, and you can clean it with your microfiber or, or whatever type of uh, cleaner you want to use that doesn't hurt plastic. Um, it has a nice little readout screen, all of your controls right here on the front. On the side here, you will see a slot for your SD card. I'll give you a close up. And right underneath that, you'll see the power inlet, which is a five volt, pretty standard for USB power. And you'll see the USB micro B uh, outlet right there on the bottom. And then you also have this big slot right on the edge, and that's where your carriers feed in. So if you have your 35 millimeter film carrier and it's loaded, you see the little white, you see the little white, uh, the little triangle there on the side. Well, there's also a corresponding white triangle on the end of each carrier. And your carrier simply goes in like so. This feeds in, comes right out the other side. Did you see that? Feeds in one side, push, comes right out the other side. Now this is, as you could probably tell, this is a very lightweight and portable unit. It's going to come in at somewhere between 45 and 46 ounces, which, ounces, ounces, which if I remember correctly is around 1,250 or 1,275 grams. That's pretty much it for the outside of the unit. I think what we need to do now is move in close with the camera and let's show you exactly how you use this little guy. Okay guys, so we have it closer, closer up anyway. Uh, here's the front of the unit. We are plugged into power. Now this power cable, I didn't mention earlier, but you can also use this in your PC. Uh, eliminate the AC adapter and plug the USB directly into your PC and you can power the unit that way. We'll talk about exactly what you can get out of that here in just a minute. So the first thing you wanna do, once you have your unit plugged in, is you wanna take your SD card out of the package and with the contacts facing you, you see right on the edge there, you just insert it and it'll, it'll spring click in place, like so. Now, if you don't put the SD card in first, and you turn it on and then put the SD card in, it's gonna shut down on you and make you restart it anyway. So you might as well put that in first. Click one time here on your power button, your main menu will pop up, it says film scanner, and now you have your little screen here with your menu options. Everything defaults to your menu options just like this. Now we are right here on capture screen. That's the first screen you're gonna see and I hope it shows up and we'll cycle through really quick. You have your left and your right buttons, your menu and your enter button, and lastly, your scan button. We'll go over that in just a second. But to cycle through these bo this bottom row right here, you go right or left. So we'll go to the right. Uh, by the way, capture is where you wanna be when you're ready to actually capture your media. Go to the right, we have format. That's to format your SD card. I would highly recommend you do that before you do anything else, just so it's formatted to this scanner. It's a really simple thing to do. You hit enter, and I don't want to format it right now, so I'll leave it on no. Um, you'll go to playback. This is if you want to playback, and it'll be in slideshow mode when you do so. Um, but we'll do that here in a couple of minutes. I'll show you what that does. And you can get it out of slideshow mode as well. Your film. This is where you will select your film type. Right now we are on the film slider up here which means we're going to scan using one of our three carriers. That's the easiest way to remember it. Film side is your carriers. Your photo side over here is for actual photos. One more to the right, that's your resolution. We hit enter and you have 14 megapixel or 22 megapixel. For the most part, people are gonna to wanna to leave it on 22. Uh, at 14, you get, uh, I don't, quite a few more scans but they're a little bit lower resolution so we will hit enter now it will always uh, this is going to take us i'm sorry you hit enter and it thinks you're ready to scan so we want to go back to the menu 
So we'll continue on. We were at resolution. We'll go one more. This is the language. There's a bunch of different languages, eight to be exact. Go back to the menu. USB MSDC simply means, like I said earlier, if you plug this into your computer uh, with your SD card in, this is going to act like a little hard drive where you can open up the contents of your SD card and view that on your computer. Now, you're not going to be able to use your computer as a preview monitor. You'll still have to do everything inside this little screen right here. Now we're back to capture. So capture is where you'll leave it on most of the time. The first thing we're going to do is the most common size photos are probably four by sixes. Uh, you, if you want to scan business cards, this, this little guide right here is made for your business cards. What we're going to start with is the three and a half by five. Now, some index cards were three and a half by five, some were three by five. We're going to use this and I'm going to show you how it can work no matter what. Now, on the back of these little guides, there's three little pins. All of them have the exact same pins in the exact same place. On the top of your scanner, there's three little holes. And you simply want this writing to be facing you and you want those pins to sit in those little holes so that your guide doesn't move around. Now, I don't have an exact three and a half by five, but like I said earlier, I have my favorite smoothie recipe, my spinach, avocado, and gr uh, green smoothie, and I want to make a quick copy of it. So I lay it face down, so the writing is facing you, turn it over, face down, and you put it in the corner of your guide. You'll close it down. Now, I'm on film. That is for your carriers. We need to switch this top dial here over to photo because anytime you're scanning using the flatbed or the top of the scanner, you slide that over. Now we have a brand new little bank of menus here. They're mostly the same, but there's a couple of extras. So we want to go over. There's your format. There's your playback. We have effect, which is you have color and you have black and white. And in this case, we're going to use black and white because I used a pencil on an index card. Uh, we hit enter. And voila, we have my index card. Now, if we go back to the menu, what we want to do, I'm going to show you. There's a crop, and this gives you your options for these. The 4x6, the 5x7, the card. So you want to hit enter. And you got 5R, which is your 5x7. Your 4R, you have your 4x6. You have 3R, which is your 3.5 by 5, which is what we have in there, and that's where we want to take it. You could scan this on 4 by 6, as you saw a second ago, but we want it a little bit closer, so we're going to use the 3.5 by 5, since that's the guide we're using. And then you also have that last one there, which is your business cards, if you're using the name card guide. So we'll go back here, we'll hit Enter, and there you can see my lovely recipe. Now, when you're ready to scan, you simply hit scan and it gives you these three options right here. You see right here you have save, you have cancel, which is the circle with the X, and you have go back to home. And you can cycle through these by hitting your left and your right arrows. So there's your save, your cancel, your home, back to your save. It's always going to default to your save. If you're ready to scan, you hit enter to save it. And you see a little hourglass at about three seconds. Your counter goes up and I have just saved this particular file or this piece of media. Voila. Now if we close this up, now if we're going to go back to the menu, if you want to see it, now we can go to the playback, hit playback, and there's your media. Go back to menu, boom, you're ready to go again. Now let's try the same thing with a couple of four by six photographs. So we take our four by six guide here, line up the pin, snap it in, and I have a couple of really old photographs that I took many moons ago. That's an old car of mine from 96, and there's a Flamingo from SeaWorld, also from 1996. Now we're gonna take these photographs, I want them facing me, and I wanna flip them so that they're face down, Line it up with the guide, close it down. 
Now we want to go back and get the correct crop because let me show you what happens if you don't. So let's hit enter. So as you can see, first and foremost, I still have it on the black and white. And second, it pushes in too far. So let's get out of that, go back to the menu. We need to switch it from black and white back over to color over here. Hit enter. Now we are in color. Go back to the menu and I want to get the right size. So we go back over. Now we have a four by six. Hit enter. And now we can see, earlier you couldn't see the front tire at all. So now we are where we want to be. Now, if I wanted to change anything, which we'll talk about in a second, but like if this picture seemed too light or too dark or too many blues or greens or something, hit enter. And now you get this little menu here and you have exposure, red, green, and blue. Now your exposure left and right, and now watch the screen, go left and it's going to underexpose go right and you're going to overexpose. It's kind of a handy little uh, little feature and if you go enter it'll drop down to your reds. If you want to take out some reds it adds blues and so on and so forth. Same with greens, same with your blues. If you want to take out some blues overall now you got a kind of a more greenish or yellowish picture. It's usually best to kind of keep it right in the center uh, because it, it def the default is usually a pretty good setting. So we're going to leave it there. You hit scan. Give it a second. Now it's back to where you can make your changes or do whatever. If you're happy with it, you hit scan again. And now you have your options here once again. We want to just save. So we hit enter. And the photo has been saved. 19 goes to 20. Take this one out. Now all of the settings are, are going to stay the same until I change them. So I can take my other four by six, lay it up there, and you can even see in the screen as you're doing it, you want it in the corner. Whoop. I'm trying not to touch the, uh, the clear plastic there, but you can see, you can see as you're doing it, you can see the picture centering itself. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I'm pretty comfortable with that, I'm ready to scan. So I hit scan. I get my three little options. I want to save it. I hit enter and it's saved. And now we have that photograph saved. Voila. Now that's, that's how easy it is to scan media on the top. I'm not going to scan a five by seven. You can free scan some things. In other words, you could just lay a photo, you can look at it. See there, you could sort of line it up the way you want if you'd rather do that. Uh, but we're not gonna do that right now. Right now, we are going to get into the slides. Now I have some old, old slides, very old slides. Now that we're gonna get into this type of media that requires the carriers, we need this slider to go over to film because now we're using the carriers. So let me get this stuff out of the way. And I also have a 35 millimeter film strip here. Some photographs I took quite a while ago, a few years ago. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second, but let me move this. And by the way, you do have your little micro microfiber cloth that we could have used to clean the top. And you also have this little, this little brush we showed you earlier where you could get off little dust specks and whatnot. Now, this little cleaning brush right here I didn't talk about that yet, but what this is for, and you want to use this when you're getting ready to do what we're getting ready to do, but you want to put this in here and you want to keep it flat. Look at your screen there. You're, you're sort of just polishing the surface, this side and this side, of any dust, whoop, dropped it, of any dust and dirt that you're going to get build up inside there, inside the scanner that you can't get to. So with that, uh, we are going to load up some slides. Now we're not going to use the 110 carrier today. I don't have 110 film, uh, but it's exactly the same principle as your slides and your 35 millimeter negatives. So let's load up the slides. So according to the manual, and I didn't show you, but it does come with a manual and a quick start guide. And it also comes with a piece of software that I'm not using uh, to or better organize business cards, but I don't know that a lot of people are going to use that. 
So here we have your slide carrier and you see the front open and it's like uh, and it's magnetic and what you do according to the manual you want your clear side or what's called the base of your film if you look at an angle and I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up one side is nice and shiny the other side is sort of etched the etched side is your emulsion side which is the side that you're that the subject was, it was facing your subject at the time. That's the side that actually gets uh, etched, so to speak, with your image. So it says it wants the shiny side facing you and then it wants it upside down. I'm gonna show you in a second that it really doesn't matter too much how you load this. Uh, in fact, I'm almost more convinced that you could just load them right side up. So we'll take these slides and we'll do it the way they say to do it. Now I will tell you as I'm loading this up, these are very old slides and they kind of just snap right into place here. They're very, very old slides and they have turned bluish purple. And that's gonna happen in a lot of cases when you have especially slides like this that are 50 something years old, 55 years old. Now we also have a slide that as you can see or maybe can't see, that's a Christmas tree but it's a long ways, but you do have to scan it still uh, in the same orientation, but it's very easy to flip later. Now, I just dropped one of the slides out, so let me grab that. I know I just moved the camera as well, and I apologize for that. Let's see if I can get that moved back in where it was. I think we're close. Okay, so let's get this first slide back in there. It's a little tricky. I got the camera hovering over my shoulder, so I apologize. And then you wanna close it, and it, the magnets will hold it snap shut. Boom, now we're done. Now you can see all the slides are in there nice and pretty. You probably wanna take your either your little brush or a little blower brush or some compressed air and kind of blow those off. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Let's go to the menu. And remember, we wanna make sure we're set on film over here because we're using the side slot. And we want to start working it out. I think I just hit the camera again, so I'm sorry. Um, we want to go to film. We want to hit enter. Now, this is a little tricky because there's no up and down buttons. If you try to use these as up and down buttons to go from the bottom to the top, it's going to get out of the menu and you don't want to do that. So these left and rights, they just cycle through everything. Now, what we have are color slides. So, so as you cycle through, you can see each, each what each thing is. This side is black and white. This side is color. Uh, positives and this side is negatives 110 and 35 millimeter so you got your 110 on top you got your 35 millimeter on the bottom we know these are 35 millimeter so we have to cycle through the bottom they're not negatives they are slides if you go one more that's black and white we know we don't have black and white so let's get back down to right there we have slides so we hit enter and then we want to go back or you could hit menu we're gonna go back to the menu and just make sure that your resolution is correct, which we know it is. It was stuck on 22. Back to capture, uh, hit enter. And we want to, with this little triangle, the white triangle, to where we can see it, insert right in and then you'll start seeing your carrier and then you'll see your first slide. And like I say, I think you just should load them um, face up. The manual is a little bit difficult for me to understand. Um, it's a little bit, it speaks in a little broken English, which is understandable. So what you do from here, obviously our slides are upside down. It's really not a big deal because if you use these arrows, the left and right arrows, you'll see what happens. Right arrow simply flips your slide upside down. Left arrow, it mirrors it. So if you have the wrong orientation, you use that. Now, uh, quite honestly, I don't know what the right orientation is for this particular slide. I guess we could take a quick peek. Uh, the boy is on the left, so that's correct. Uh, as you can see, clearly, everything is quite blue or what would be purple, maybe. Uh, you'll know better once you get it on your computer. Um, but everything is pretty bluish. Uh, we're going to scan it as is, and then we're going to adjust the colors a little bit. So whenever we're ready, we hit scan. We're on save, so we hit enter and we save it. 
Now that one is saved and now we move on. You just move it over, you slide your little carrier and there is little clicks in there, but you can manually line it up. And there is a beautiful mountain scene, very blue, but we are ready and we're gonna scan it and save it. And then I'm gonna show you in a second, we're gonna do these three just again really quick. I say three because the one, the last one doesn't look like it needs much help. There's an old Mustang and we are gonna scan that. Let's move these out of the way, we're scanned. And we'll go to the Christmas tree. And you do wanna scan it sideways and then you can flip it later. So go ahead and scan it the way it sits right here. You hit scan, save. And there we go. Now, what I want to do is I want to push this carrier back over. I'm going to show you, we're going to do these first three slides again, only this time we're going to hit enter instead of scan. And we're going to get the same thing we got before when we were doing the photographs. And in this particular case, we're going to come down to our blues and we're going to take about three stops of blue. That's all we're going to do. About three stops of blue out of that picture. We're ready to scan. Get out of that menu, hit it again, save. Like I say, this isn't gonna make it perfect, but it's gonna make it, I think, a lot better. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one. To get back into that menu, you just hit enter, and we want to come down to our blues. Let's take about three, that was four, let's take about three out of it, right? Whew, it's awfully blue. That looks good. We hit scan once to get out of that. Hit scan a second time, ready to save, hit enter. And I'm gonna show you all of these photographs, how they came out at the end when we go back to do our wrap up. Lastly, we're gonna do our car, hit enter, come down to our blue. Oh, it's already set actually. I didn't realize it did that, but once we leave it on blue, it's going to stay or, or make these adjustments. It stays until you readjust them or turn the machine off. So we hit scan, scan again, enter, and we are saved. That's it. That's how you scan slides, 35 millimeter slides. Now, the last thing I want to show you is your negatives. Now this carrier is a little tricky to open. It's not magnetic. Uh, it's a click style. I don't know why they didn't make this one magnetic, but they didn't. Still very nice and heavy duty. Now with these types of things, these uh, negatives, a little bit of dust, you should be wearing gloves and I'm not because it's a little tricky for me to do that right now. Uh, but you still want the, according to the manual, the base side to face you or the shiny side. And they also say have it upside down. For this, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave them right side up. There's little pins inside your carrier here. I hope you can see those. Just little pins. And you want to line up the perforation with those pins and lay it flat. Like so. It kind of snaps in, and once you get it close, close it up. And there you have it. You're all set to go. Now hit your menu, and now we want to go back to our film, because we need to tell this scanner what kind of film we're, we're actually using. And in this case, we're using 135 color, so it would be this first one right here. Cycle through, negative film, color negative film. So we're ready to go, we hit enter. Now we may still be, we'll see in a second, but then you wanna feed it in. You got your white triangle, you wanna feed it in. And the principle is exactly the same. And it's upside down because it's using the same setting that we used before. <laughs> so it, because the slides I did put in upside down. So we just hit this button right here and now we're right side up. If we want to mirror it, which I believe that's the correct orientation, then we do that. Let's go through these really quick and we're going to save them just as is. And then we're going to make one adjustment. So I want to scan and enter. These are just random photos that I took uh, about three or four years ago. 
scan and enter. And I can kind of tell by looking at them that it's overexposing them just a little bit. Scan, enter. And then we're going to pull. Scan, enter. Now, I don't know if uh, I'm going to show all of these pictures, but I did want to show. Okay, we got to the end. Now, this very first one, I can, I can just tell that it's overexposing it. So I want to hit enter, and I want to bring my exposure, this first thing. I'm going to bring it down one click. Hit scan, scan again, and save it. And then at the very end, I'm going to show you exactly what that did. And that, that's it. That's basically all there is to know about this little scanner. You pop it out. You want to shut it off. It says goodbye. Pop out your SD card. Put it in your computer. Check out your files. Let's take it back over to Mike. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little breakdown. Uh, like I say, it's really not difficult to use. Uh, it's not the greatest quality in the world, as you'll see in a second. Um, but it has its place in the market. I really, truly believe that. Um, let me show you, the first thing we did was we scanned the my favorite recipe, my smoothie recipe, which was my, my spinach avocado smoothie. Here's what we got out of that kind of the free scan. And none of these photos have been, have been altered at all through Photoshop or any uh, editing software at all. This is all straight out of the scanner, right off the card. Um, here are the two photographs, the, the flamingo and the car. And like I say, no editing whatsoever on the photographs because I wanted to show you exactly what the scanner can produce. Now, here are the examples of my slides that I scanned. You remember the slides? There were four of them. Um, they were quite purple because they're really, really old uh, from 1968. And I'm going to show you initially what I got on all the default settings right here. And then here's what I got just by lowering the blue levels out of the scanner. Now you're going to want, if your slides are in that bad of shape, you're going to want to do a little bit of post-processing on them anyway, um, probably in some software on your computer. But this little machine does a fairly decent job of, of kind of getting rid of some of those nasty purples and blues. So I did lower it down uh, in the blue levels about three clicks. And here are those photos once again, the purple ones. So like I say, it did a fair job. I mean, I probably could have adjusted it even left and right on the reds and the and the uh, the greens and the purples a little bit better, but that was a very quick example. Just to show you that the scanner itself, uh, you can make some adjustments to your colors a little bit. And last but not least, let me show you the film negatives, the 35 millimeter negatives that we did. Here they are, all completely default levels right out of the scanner. Now, one thing I did notice with those in particular, the scanner seemed to want to overexpose those or add a little bit too much light. So I did tune the exposure down by one click or a stop, however you want to call it. But I went backwards on the exposure to darken it just one click. And here's what I got when I did that. And that's it. And like I said, I, I don't have any 110 film to show you. I did have some 16 millimeter, but I didn't scan it. The process is exactly the same. Uh, what do I think about it? I don't think it's for professional use. There is some artifacts. The resolution is not fantastic. So I put together a tiny little pros and cons list that I came up with personally. You may have your own pros and cons. Here they are. My pros for this scanner, pro number one, is that it's lightweight and very portable. I think it would be a very handy little device if your mom or grandma or the school or somebody had some photos or something they didn't want to part with and you wanted to run over there and you wanted to do everything 
on this little scanner just so you had your backup copies. You don't need a PC or it doesn't have to be connected to computer at all. So I think that's great in that it's extremely portable and it's very, very lightweight. I also love the fact that it's very quick. It's not a flatbed scanner. It's not the, the normal CNC scan every pixel type scanner. It's a sensor scanner. So there's a tiny little camera inside here that basically just takes a picture of your media. It's very, very quick. It takes about three seconds to photo and save uh, your piece of media. I also love that it has the, like we talked about earlier, the removable clear plastic top. It makes it very easy to get, whoa, to get inside the scanner if you need to, also to clean this piece of plastic, which is quite handy. You can't really clean the underside in a flatbed scanner. The last pro that I'll give you on this are these carriers. They're extremely well made. I actually was quite surprised at just how solid these carriers really are. Uh, I was surprised to see they had such high quality um, carriers. The two carriers here, the slide and the 110 carriers are magnetic based. So when you open them, there's little magnets inside. Listen, they snap closed. The 35 millimeter one's a little trickier. It's just a snap closure. Can be a little tricky to open but it's really solid and it holds your film nice and flat because as we know, if we scan our own film, sometimes your film likes to curl and it's nice to keep it nice and flat. Now with that, all of the pros, here are my cons. First and foremost, and the most important part of this unit is I think uh, it's the low resolution files that you get out of it. Like I said earlier, it's not for professional use. Don't plan on starting a company where you're gonna scan people's media using this unit. If you do, you're gonna have some upset customers. Now, for the most part, if it's family and friends, they're probably gonna be pretty happy with the results. A Couple other little, sort of more just uh, cosmetic quirks for me is the power cable. It's got a 90 degree, at least mine did. I don't know if they're all gonna come this way, but it has this USB micro B. It's at a 90 degree, and when it plugs into the side, it's sort of at a wonky little angle here. And then to me, it's just, I know that's nitpicking, but that is uh, one of my cons. And the last thing I can think of, quite honestly, because it, it did a fair job for what you get. The 35 millimeter carrier here, aside from the fact that it can be kind of a pain to get open until you get used to it, it has, um, like I said earlier, it has these little pins where, you're, where you fit your film in. And some cameras don't take exactly the same frame size as others. And sometimes with these divider lines, your frames don't exactly line up. Now you can kind of fudge it left and right just a little bit, but for the most part, you're gonna crop your photo a little bit anyway, so it's really not that big a deal. It's nitpicky for me, but there have been occasions where I've practiced with it and my film negatives, the frames, didn't line up exactly perfect inside those six little dividers. That's it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down there below. If you like this video, uh, I did the best I could. If you enjoyed it, if you had any fun whatsoever, if you learned anything, do me a favor on your way out the door, tap the like button for me. I would really appreciate it. Um, if you think I've earned it and you wanna see some more film-related content, mostly Cinefilm, how about that? See that picture there? How about subscribe for me? Hit the bell notification so that you are fully, fully aware of every time this goofball uploads a brand new video. Uh, and until the very next time, and it's gonna be some fun found film, that I see all of your beautiful faces. Thank you for joining me, by the way. Mm -hmm. Here it goes. I'll see all of you on the very next go around.